My name is James Calloway, and uh, I'm a veteran of this industry, having been the chairman of Aura Cobre for, from startup to building up all Raz into putting it into production. And for the last seven years, I've devoted my complete attention to the development of Rylat Ridge by Iron Air. And I do believe that this is the most important project in North America, uh, and it's one of two projects that have significant op opportunity to be in production in the 2026 timeframe and provide the critical materials that are absolutely necessary. The United States is not blessed actually with conventional resources as I think you all know, but that doesn't mean it's not blessed with some incredible lithium opportunities. And I think that in particular, the, the sedimentary deposits in, in Nevada are uniquely important to the United States from a point of view of both quality and volume. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about ours. So one of the, I was listening to a lot of conversations today, and I think that one of the, the points that was made, I think by Paul Graves is, it's a very technical business, the lithium business. And you really have to focus on detail. It, 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 lithium is not a very nice behaving uh, material and it tricks you. And so one of the things that's very important is that you do very detailed engineering. I learned this from bringing in Alaraz and all the mistakes that we made and had to correct. But here at, at, at Ioneer at Rylite Ridge, for the last six years, we've been in intensive engineering design of our plant. You can see a picture of it here. This is not an artist's rendition. This is actually a floor rendering of our, of our plant that we're gonna start construction in Q1 of next year. Uh, this was a, a, will produce enough lithium carbonate. We, we, we're gonna be producing technical grade lithium carbonate uh, to the tune of between 20, 22,000 tons coming up in phase one. But it has a very interesting characteristic. The resource that we're actually producing from is uniquely in, in Nevada, it's, it's a sedimentary deposit, but it is not a clay project. Uh, the, the, the material that we're actually using is we call surlcite. And it's the only two that examples of this is the Jadar over in, in Serbia and in ours where we have a borosilicate that has lithium in it. And in our case, we have about a 2,000 acre mini basin that has an enormous amount of boron and lithium in the same rock. And it turns out that this plant will release that very efficiently and allow us to have very low cost lithium production and lithium chemicals, not precursors in the United States to go into the supply chains of the United States. Beyond the first 20, 22,000 tons we'll bring up in uh, 2026, this asset, which will get ready to be finished, their permitting, um, will, will have enormous growth potential. Uh, it's not just phase one, it's phase two, it's phase three, it's phase four. The size of the asset is very, very large. So I'd like to, whoop, I'm going the wrong way. Let's see, what did I do? So what are the key things? Well, permitting, we right now have the two of the three permits that we need from the, both from the state. And we're in a very advanced stage of our permitting with the United States. We're on federal lands, which of course is never something you want to say, but we've been working at, with the BLM and with the Fish and Wildlife and with the government now for a number of years. And we are now in the formal NEPA process, which we, we by the way, were the first project in the United States. I think the only new mine project that actually was put into the NEPA process by this administration. And we anticipate completing NEPA in first quarter of next year and getting our final permit. We also have completed our binding offtake agreements, uh, which are obviously very important for the finance. Uh, that's with Ford. Uh, we'll be providing 7,000 tons a year to Ford under a binding offtake that, uh, for the first five years of production. Uh, we also have a, a, a five-year agreement with PPES, which is the Toyota Panasonic joint venture for 4,000 tons a year for, for five years. And then for the very, maybe less known, but EcoPro is 7,000 tons for three years, and EcoPro is the most sophisticated cathode maker in Korea. So we're, we're, we, we've completed our binding offtake agreements and have the, those in place. We're also funded. So we have two pieces of funding. One was from Sabanye Stillwater, which is our, 
our equity partner, their large mining uh, in, endeavor, which is getting very involved in the battery materials, by the way. And they've committed to us $490 million of equity, common equity in our project. And we are also the only, they're the only mining company, it's like to say this, we're the only mining company that actually has made it through the three phases of the Department of Energy Loan Program Office. So we've gone through you know, the starting gate, which doesn't mean a lot, you put it in. Then you have an internal review, which is very long and hard, which we completed. And then the, the most important is when, of course, when they say that they think that you're gonna make it, and then they bring in all their external consultants, and that's a very long, hard process when we've achieved that and, and our, our term sheet has been approved by the Department of Energy. So we have 700 million plus 500 essentially. So we have approximately $1.2 billion of capital available to, to build this project. We, uh, we take a very strong engineering approach. I, I know it's not very exciting and I'm probably the least most boring person you've ever heard up here, but the truth of the matter is that that if you don't take a very serious approach to your engineering, you're gonna be in trouble. Uh, and that includes, by the way, being sure that you build very robust pilot plants. Uh, chemical engineers, so many people ask me, what are, the, what are the problems in the industry? Why does it have so much trouble? And I say, well, one of the reasons is that everybody think, chemical engineers all think a priori they can figure out how to do a flow sheet and then tell you to go build it, and they're all wrong, okay? It turns out that they're, details that only are observed when you do proper scaled pilot plants and do it extensively. And we did that and we completed our pilot plant and our DFS three years ago. And our, our engineering firm is Fluor Corporation. They've been with us for five years. Uh, we're at, right now we're at 70% engineering complete, which I don't believe there's ever been a junior that's ever could say that. We finished our DFS at 30% complete. I personally think uh, there was a, a my old, my old company's CEO, he was mentioning about the, the lags that we see in projects where you know, they have a DFS and then they have an FID and then for some strange reason there's two and three years before anything really happens. That's not an accident because most time DFSs are at 20 to 30 percent engineering complete when they're done well. Most of them aren't even done that well but just say give it the benefit of the doubt I don't think you should start building these things until you have at least 60 to 70 percent engineering complete because you don't understand what you're building. So we, we've taken a very focused approach. I think I'm going to run a... This it's Department of Energy uh, loan is very interesting. Uh, it, it's a, it's, it, the tenor of the loan is 10 years. You draw it down in tranches and when you draw down it's to the, the, whatever the 10-year treasury rate is at the time for that tranche is what you pay. So it's an aggregate of the drawdown over about a year time frame. Uh, and uh, but we're very excited to have them behind us. They've been super supportive. Uh, Jigger Shaw, I know y'all have heard him already, deserves a lot of credit. Him and, and John Podesta in the White House deserve a lot of credit for stimulating uh, the, the opportunity in America. We've just recently put out a new mineral resource. We, we've been very focused on phase one, so we don't talk a lot about our growth because, you know, I hear so many people talking about this, that, and the other, and then they never build anything. And that's just never results in a good business. Uh, so we've been very focused on phase one, and we don't talk a lot about it, but we finally did come out with a, a, a brand new mineral resource. And we have, in our, in our mini basin, about 2,000 basin, all the sediments in it are loaded with lithium. One of them is clay with lithium. We have about, a, about 130 million tons of lithium clay already drilled, and it's a lot of growth to that. And then below it, we have the borosilicate, which has got the boron and lithium. And I should have mentioned this. Every time we produce one ton of lithium at our borosilicate, that's why we're, this can be phase one, we produce nine tons of boron, of, of boric acid. And that boric acid is so valuable, it's all also already sold to the mainly the big glass makers. That covers 70% of our op total operating costs for the project. So because of that, we come in at the bottom of the cost curve in the United States for lithium. We have a lot of growth potential in our company. Uh, we're just beginning to talk about it. You'll be hearing more about that as we, we go along. Uh, oops, I'm now going again the wrong way, aren't I? You can see I'm really good at this. Um, 
The last thing I'd say, and I know I'm over, Bond, is we're really quite far along in our, our permitting process. We are, have a high confidence that we'll be successful in getting our, our permit, final permit, so we can start construction in Q1. We expect that early in the, in the beginning of the year. And really, that's all that's left to realize this very important project for, for America. Thank you very much.